Hey, how's it going everybody? So, I have been playing with the GPD Win 3 for quite a while now. And it's a pretty good device. I, uh, I think, you know, there's... Windows is obviously not what they should have had installed by default. Um, they should have put Linux on it and really, you know, tweaked it to be the absolute perfect gaming machine. Have the, the function buttons be set up to do very specific tasks that are geared towards gaming. Um, there's a lot of things that they could have done that they didn't do um, with the GPD Win 3. Uh, the Intel uh, X or XE1 graphics that are on this uh, Intel chip, they're, they're not well supported. So, you know, I mean, they work fine on Linux for the games that are supported. So there's some games that I think you have to do some like tweaking to even get working, such as Doom Eternal, um, but it's not supported out of the box. So if you install it with Steam, you try to launch it, it's, it's gonna say, it's gonna first give you a warning saying, you know, this, this, uh, this machine's not supported, but, and then, it, then it'll go and, you know, try to launch it after that. But yeah, so it's, it's like, there's, there's some good things and there's some bad things about the device. I've been having a lot of fun with it. I don't wanna make it all negative, but, I've been having a lot of fun with this device. I played with it for probably about, I wanna say two months or one and a half months with Windows. And I, I was playing The Witcher 3, which I don't really have a lot of time to play games because I'm always working. I work like a lot of hours, but anyway. So when I before I go to bed, I usually try to get in like a half an hour of gaming. And since I've gotten this device, it's been really nice because I can go to my bed, play for half an hour, or maybe even an hour if I if I have enough energy, and then you know turn it off and, and go to sleep. But I found when I was running with Windows is the device would you know lose power basically when I started getting tired, which was usually around about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. So the device would run out of juice. So after the SSD died, um, that was one of the problems that I've encountered with this device is the SSD is just terrible. Um, it's a one terabyte SSD and yeah, mine died. It started giving like um, error exceptions in Windows. And before I was, I already had like a, a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, like a 970 Samsung that I had just laying around from my old desktop computer that I, I didn't use anymore because I installed a one terabyte version. So um, I, I took that uh, old SSD I had laying around, put Ubuntu on it, uh, actually KDE Neon to be specific, and then I started working with the GPD Win with that, and I've noticed that my battery life is a lot better. So my battery life with, with Linux is probably like two hours, um, even while gaming, so that, that's pretty good for for what it is, you know. So I just wanted to go through a couple of the things that I think most people are gonna enjoy with this kind of device. Let me just grab it real quick. So here's the device. It's, you know, it's a handheld. It's not too big. It's a really great device. And I think, you know, with all the news of the Steam Deck coming out, uh, it doesn't really make me sad that I got this because I'm still gonna get the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck is obviously gonna be better. AMD graphics are way, there's, the support for AMD graphics is a lot better. The drivers are more mature and on Linux, it works great. Um, Intel, they're open source as well, but the, the, the graphics just aren't as mature, you know? So they haven't been working on their kind of graphics stacks as much as AMD. So that's one plus for the Steam Deck. The other plus is it's natively gonna be supporting Linux. You know, they, that's what they had in mind. So that's gonna be a huge boon for, you know, not just Linux, but for Steam, because they're gonna have that independence away from Windows, and Windows is trying to, you know, push uh, their own their own agenda, which is not gonna be good for Valve. So, back on topic. I think this is gonna be a great device because, you know, even if I get the Steam Deck, you know, six months down the road, I, I've been playing around with another little tool that I'll talk about later, Mycroft. And I think this will be a great little device for Mycroft, um, for my purposes anyway. I'll be able to uh, 
um, have like a really nice display for tinkering and I can use it as like basically a dedicated development device. Raspberry Pi is really nice, but um, I, I mean, I already have one set up. I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll talk about that later some other time, but this is gonna be really nice. It's got an integrated microphone, integrated speakers and everything. So it's just like one package where you can get all the stuff in the screen is actually pretty nice. So it's, uh, it's gonna be a really, really awesome device for that. And, you know, potentially even even something else could be added onto that. So for the GPD Win 3, I got, I supported the Indiegogo campaign. I, I saw the device and I was like, wow, this is really, it's a great idea. This is basically what I wanted because I had a Nintendo Switch. I was playing some games with the Nintendo Switch and then all of a sudden um, my, my game saves got deleted just randomly. And I was playing Boulder's Gate, which is, you know, <laughs> It's one of my favorite games. I, I have a project IE 4K that I've been working on. But yeah, when my save games got deleted, I was just like, what? And I know I probably could have, you know, done some other things to save it or whatever. It's just, you have to relearn everything when you get these kind of closed devices. You don't know what you're able to do, what you're not able to do. Then you have to go look it up and search. And so it's like you have to gain a whole new skill set just to use their their device. So like if you get a PlayStation, you get an Xbox, you get a Switch, it's a completely different experience, you know, it's a completely different operating system. I mean, sometimes they're using Linux under the hood, sometimes not, but anyway, um, it's just, it's a waste of time to have to learn all these things over again when you have, you can just use a computer, it's, it's going to be the exact same thing, and plus you can install mods, you know, later on down the road, you can keep installing your games, you can steep keep on playing your games. You don't have to use an emulator. You know, emulators are great and people are really into the emulation thing. You know, that's awesome. Um, but, you know, for exclusive titles, the only reason they have the exclusive titles is because people are willing to buy the consoles. If people weren't willing to buy the consoles, then there would be no exclusive titles because they would have to, you know, market towards the bigger audience. So, I think ultimately there's always going to be those consoles because there's people who are just, you know, I, I mean, I was like that when I was a kid, I, I was raised on a Sega Genesis, getting a Nintendo and you buy the consoles. And that was really all we had for gaming until we got a, a computer. But anyway, uh, yeah, I think this is just hits the sweet spot for, you know, usage. You can, you can do everything you can with a PC, but it's it's really low on power. It sips power. I mean, you can run it. I mean, I have mine set at 12 watts right now, but you can run it at 10, maybe even lower. Um, I haven't really tested it a lot with that, but I mean, you can do it. You can definitely do it. So if you're playing a game that's not very demanding, you can have this running for a really long time turn the the, the screen brightness way way down uh, you can run this for for quite a while so i mean it has more power but you can you can turn the power down to increase your battery life and i mean some of those things it'd be nice if it did it automatically but sometimes you know they don't know what the user is going to have in mind um but you know that's some things with some intelligent software which hopefully with the steam deck we're going to see some of that kind of stuff so for opening this device, it was pretty easy to do. I have an iFixit kit, and after you take out all the screws, there's a, a bunch of screw holes on there. After you take out all the screws, you just run one of those little blue plastic pieces in between the crack, and there's like these little clips, basically just like a, you know, a little clip, it just, it comes up like a hook. So it hooks onto the other side, so you just have to push it down a little bit when you're running your piece of plastic through the crack, and it just, it comes right off, so. Uh, just be careful use a piece of plastic to do it because this plastic is definitely um, it's kind of brittle you know at, at the edges I've noticed the paint is a little it makes the, the plastic look brittle and it's easy to scratch this paint so you want to use a, a, a soft plastic to, to get those clips off but then once you do that all you have to do is unscrew this fan which is sitting over the, the NVMe SSD that's in the system. And then you can take it out. So, I mean, it's, it's really super easy to upgrade. I still recommend people getting this because I mean, you can literally get this right now. 
You don't have to wait six months six months to get the Steam Deck, you know. But I mean, if you want to get get the Steam Deck instead, because I think the Steam Deck is going to be really great for Linux. And obviously, I support pretty much everything Steam does, Valve does, because you know they're the ones pushing you know adoption for a lot of these technologies that used to be you know kind of hindrances towards being able to do that being able to use linux as a full-time rig and stuff like that but i mean if you haven't seen this device yet it's got a full-size keyboard this is something that a lot of the other devices don't have um i mean it's not a full-size keyboard but it's like it's got a full keyboard you can you can type and do all that stuff um it's not it's not it, it works great i mean for linux I haven't tried to get the fingerprint sensor. I like I briefly looked at this PPA that they had that somebody was working on, um, but it seems like it, it fell out of adoption in uh, 20.04 of Ubuntu. So I'm, I'm not sure if it's in the Arch AUR or, or anything like that. I haven't really checked. I was trying to find the source code for it uh, just to see if I could get it to compile on a newer version of Ubuntu, um, but I they didn't have the source code in Launchpad either. So I was gonna test that out to see if I could have a graphical interface to try to set up the, the fingerprint sensor. But other than that, I think the only thing I had difficulties with was um, setting up the setting up the screen because this screen for some reason is set up in portrait mode. So it's like it's like reversed, right? So like the screen technically from the hardware specifications is supposed to be this or in this orientation but you have to obviously turn it to this orientation so you can you know use the controls and it's got this little well, it's got this little toggle on the side so you can switch from uh, keyboard to game uh, you know controller mode game controller mode so all these buttons will work like a, a normal game controller so but after you get that stuff set up, I mean, I can I can link to some of the scripts. Some guy just made some really great scripts for a lot of the stuff, and I set them all up, and they worked really great. Um, KDE Plasma, out of the box, you could, you know, right-click, switch the orientation. It worked perfectly. Um, but Gnome Shell, if you tried to switch the orientation, it, it just black screen. You had to reset the device. And uh, I mean, I got it to work like once in a live um, live situation, but then like four of the other times it just didn't work. Um, but there is some scripts that this guy made and he's, you know, went through the, the painful process of figuring out why certain things are already not working. And he figured out a way to get Gnome Shell to, to work on this device and to switch the orientation. I'm just saying, you know, out of the box, if you just wanted to set this up, KDE Plasma just works where you know gnome shell you have to do some extra extra stuff so yeah i think i think this device has a lot of uh good things about it i think you know if you're running linux on this device it's going to be a lot of fun um yeah there's not there's not much more i could say about it battery life is good steam obviously works well with this installed ubuntu it's got you know great speed i'm playing um the witcher 3 like i said and i'm i mean that's like a what five seven year old game or something but it still looks pretty good and i have the settings i think up to medium so it's, it's probably not as powerful as the steam deck's going to be but it's still pretty pretty powerful so yeah i think the gpd win 3 is definitely a good system uh if you want to game mobile if you want to, you know, just take your experience from your desktop maybe to bed or, you know, just sitting on the couch and having this thing in front of you or on a train or any kind of those situations, this is great. It's going to be way better than the Switch, you know, because the Switch, you don't have to buy these very specific games. You can literally just play anything from your PC's game library. Um, yeah, there's a lot of benefits to getting a, a handheld PC. Um, versus you know some lockdown system which man i could go on a rant about that but anyway 
it uh it came with the dock with the one that i got and the dock works you know pretty well i haven't had any complaints with the dock i think you know obviously i haven't tested the eGPU feature yet that's going to be uh, something maybe i'll do later on down the line i wanted to test the sd card i haven't really had a chance to test the sd card just to see if maybe i could save a game and uh, see how what, what kind of you know damage it does to the to the sd card if it if it can, if it can keep up I, i'm not really sure but yeah great little device works great boots up fast um, yeah so if you're looking for a handheld this is it's not a bad one to get obviously if something is supported by linux that's going to be much better if you're in that kind of camp but uh anyway I just wanted to make this short video, talk about that, so uh, take it easy.